This lecture is part of an online undergraduate course on complex analysis and will be about the functional equation of the Riemann zeta function. So we're going to show how to use the residue theorem to relate zeta of s to zeta of 1 minus s. Um, we will do this using a technique known as the Bromwich contour. And the Bromwich contour looks like this. You sort of go around the origin and along here round here and round here. And here we have a big circle of radius big R and a little circle of radius little r. And what often happens is that in applications the integral around the little circle often tends to zero as r tends to zero and the integral around the big circle often tends to zero as big r tends to infinity. And you might think these two little integrals along the real axis cancel out because you're going along them in opposite directions. In fact, they sometimes don't because what you often do is you integrate functions of the form um, z to the s. And z to the s is one of these multi-valued functions. And when you go round the origin, it changes by a factor of e to the 2 pi i s. So these two integrals don't cancel out. One of them is e to the 2 pi i s times the other. Um, finally, um, we ought to say which way you go around the contour since the integral is going to change sign if you go that way round as opposed to that way round. And I'm not going to tell you which way you go round because um, th th this is a notorious source of sign errors. Um, it's very difficult to get the sign right when you're working with this contour. And if I tell you which way you go along the contour, there's a 50-50 chance I'll get all my signs wrong. And if I don't tell you which way I, I, you're, I'm going along the contour, then, then you can't catch me out on that. So if you ever do this, you really have to watch the signs carefully. I mean, so every time I do it, I get the opposite sign to the last time I did it. So um, let's first apply this to the gamma function. We have gamma s is the integral of naught to infinity of e to the minus c, z to the s minus 1 dz for real part of s greater than 0. And what we're going to do is convert this into um, something that looks a little bit like the Bromwich contour. So we're sort of going like that. And on this bit we're integrating e to the minus c z to the s minus 1 dz and on this bit we're integrating something like e to the 2 pi i s times e to the minus c z to the s minus 1 dz. And the integral around this little circle tends to 0 as little r tends to 0. Here little r is the radius um, if the real part of s is greater than 0. If the real part of s is less than 0 then, then this bit becomes rather big near the origin and, and, and the integral around the little circle is not so well behaved. So we find the integral around this, this contour c of e to the minus c z to the s minus 1 dz is equal to 1 minus e, e to the 2 pi i s times gamma s because you've got a um, these two terms come from the integral along the straight line segments. And one application of this, you notice this is holomorphic for all s because e to the minus z decreases very fast as, as z tends to plus infinity. So, so there are no convergence problems with this integral no matter what s is. Um, in particular, we don't get problems at s equals 0 because we're not actually integrating to s equals 0. We, we're carefully going round it. Um, and um, the, uh, the, 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 this is non-zero for s not an integer. So we can divide by this whenever s is an integer and we find the analytic continuation of gamma s to all s that aren't integers. So this, the, 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 we, we, we get the analytic continuation of gamma s from this formula here. Um, it's convenient to rewrite a little bit. You see that this term here is not terribly symmetric. So if we just multiply both sides by, by um, a constant factor we get e to the minus c times minus c to the s minus 1 dz and you notice I'm putting in a minus sign there. And now this is equal to 
e to the minus pi i s minus e to the pi i s times gamma of s because we sort of multiplied both sides by e to the pi i s or possibly the inverse of that. Um, this term here is possibly minus 2 i sine pi s but as I said I, I sometimes get the sign here wrong. Um, so now we're going to apply this to um, the zeta function. So we start with this formula minus 2 i sine pi s gamma s over now I'm going to divide by n to the s and this is the integral over this funny contour c of e to the minus c times minus c over n to the s minus 1 times dz over n. So we've we've just taken the previous formula and divided both sides by n to the s. And now we change z to nz and we get e to the minus nz times minus c to the s minus 1 dz. We're integrating over this contour c. And now what we do is we sum over n greater than 0. And this side becomes minus 2i sine pi s gamma s zeta of s because we're just summing over, over n to the s. And this side becomes the integral over c of 1 over e to the z minus 1 times minus z to the s minus 1 dz. And that's because this 1 over e to the z minus 1 is equal to e to the minus z plus e to the minus 2z plus e to the minus 3z and so on. Um, so we've got this formula for um, um, zeta of s and um, you notice this actually gives the analytic continuation of zeta of s. So, so we get an analytic continuation because as before we see that this side here is um, um, behaves well for all real s sorry for all complex s um, so um, so that gives the analytic continuation in order to get the functional equation what we do is we use the Bromwich contour. So what we do is, is, is we're looking at the function 1 over e to the z minus 1 minus c the s minus 1 dz and we're now going to look at the following contour. So we're going to do a little, let me do it in red so you can see it a bit better. We're going to do a little circle there and then round there and then round a big circle here and back again. And this is a little right little r and this has radius big r. And the integral around this bit is going to be the zeta function multiplied by those weird factors. The integral around the big circle, um, so the integral around the big circle tends to zero as r tends to infinity if um, the um, real part of s is less than zero. Um, and there are also some singularities of this function where we have to worry about. So at the points 2 pi i, 4 pi i, minus 2 pi i and so on, we notice that e to the z minus 1 is equal to naught at z is equal to 2 n pi i. So, so when we do the integral around this big red contour, we don't actually get zero. We pick up terms from all the residues at these points here. So the, 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 the integral um, around um, 2 n pi i um, is um, minus 2 pi i n to the s minus 1 times minus 2 pi i. So all we have to do is to take the residue of this function at that point here and this has a has a um, um, a simple pole so we're more or less getting the value of this at um, z equals 2 n pi i multiplied by the residue of the pole there. So um, we can now put this all together and you see that the, so the red integral is going to be the sum of all the residues and we know what the residues are and the red integral is more or less the zeta function so if we put everything together we get 2 sine pi s gamma s times zeta of s 
is equal to 2 pi to the s times sum uh, over n to the s minus 1, this is over n greater than 0, of minus i to the s minus 1 plus i to the s minus 1. So here this is just a, 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 a sum over the um, residues up to a factor of 2 pi i or whatever and this is this is the value of the integral in terms of the zeta function. Um, and you notice that this bit here Well, Riemann noticed that this bit here is just zeta of 1 minus s. So we've got a formula relating zeta of s to zeta of 1 minus s. Well, one obvious problem with this formula is it's really a bit of a mess. Um, Riemann found this really neat way of simplifying it. What he did was he wrote zeta star of s. Well, he didn't write this, but whatever. Um, it, so you put zeta star of s as pi to the minus s over 2, gamma s over 2 times zeta of s. And using some properties of the gamma function that we will probably cover later, he showed that the functional equation becomes zeta star of 1 minus s is equal to zeta star of s. So this is the neat version of the functional equation for the Riemann zeta function. And you see that the, the original definition accidentally missed out these factors here, which makes it much better behaved. Um, so one application of this, you notice that zeta star of s is real if the real part of s is equal to a half. You remember this was the critical line. And this follows because zeta star of s, well the complex conjugate is zeta star of the complex conjugate of s, which is zeta star of 1 minus the complex conjugate of s by the functional equation, which is equal to zeta star of s and this follows because the real part of s is equal to a half. So um, this shows that zeta star is actually real on this line and this is very nice because it means you can actually prove that zeta star of s vanishes at some points of the line if we can find that zeta star of a half plus i t1 is greater than zero and zeta star of a half plus i t2 is less than zero, then obviously there must be a zero of zeta star on the critical line between the points t1 and t2. And Riemann actually found values for which t1 was positive and t2 was negative. So he could prove that the zeta function had at least one zero on, on, the, on the critical line. In fact, I think he found three zeros on the critical line and conjectured that all zeros were on the critical line apart from a few he found on the, on the negative real axis. So that's the Riemann hypothesis, which is the world's most notorious unsolved problem in mathematics, that is. So uh, as a final um, example, I'll just give an exercise in the use of the Bromwich contour. And this exercise is to work out the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 over x plus 1 dx. And this converges provided 0 is less than the real part of s is less than 1. And the way you do it is you take the Bromwich style contour and you have to show that the integral along the big circle tends to zero and the integral along the little circle tends to zero and you relate the integral along these bits to the integral here. And you notice that at x equals minus one there is um, a singularity so you have to work out the residue at this point and then if you put everything together you should be able to evaluate this integral. Okay next lecture we will probably be discussing singularities of um, holomorphic of functions.